What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Nerdy Mark channel. I am Sid the Nerdy Mark. And today I have your review of NXT and 205 Live. So I hope you guys had a great Halloween. I hope you had a fun, safe, and eventful Halloween. For me personally, it did rain here quite a bit. And we bought like all this Halloween candy and it's just sitting there. And we don't want to decay our teeth. So if anyone wants to take it off of our hands, feel free to do so. I know that my good friends uh, at Armbar Audio had a better Halloween than I did, uh, particularly John Kearns who dressed up as uh, Marty Skrull for Halloween and that was a damn good cosplay. I just wanted to shout him out because um, it was really, really good. So uh, let me know in the comments below what you guys did for Halloween because I would really like to know. But uh, with that in mind, let's get into our WWE Network shows starting with NXT. NXT began with Nikki Cross taking on Mercedes Martinez. I almost said Punishment Martinez. To quote Nikki Cross, this was fun. Really good match, really, really enjoyed this one. Martinez showing that she's not just another pushover and she's not just enhancement talent. So I think she will be back and they may have some plans for her in the near future. Possibly pairing her up with Punishment Martinez, who knows because they have the same last name. Mercedes took Nikki Cross to Backdrop City, Backdrop Suplex City uh, for a little bit. And it looked like uh, Martinez had Nikki Cross's number until Cross finally hit the purge for the win. Afterwards, uh, Johnny Gargano's wife, Candice LeRae, came out wearing all black lipstick and looked like she was gonna completely turn with her husband, but she didn't. She's just really pissed off at Nikki Cross. And why wouldn't she be? The woman ratted out your husband. Obviously, you would be kind of pissed. So she's like, oh, that's not funny. And Nikki Cross just laughing at her and she rolls out of the ring and out comes Aleister Black when her laughter completely stops. It's like she's under his beck and call, you know? He's like, a, he's like her snake charmer in a way. But Nikki Cross runs away. Aleister Black confronts uh, Candace. He asks where Johnny is. She's like, he's not here. I don't know where he is. Aleister says, uh, Johnny Gargano will fade to black. He doesn't even get a microphone. He just goes in there and says it because he's that livid at Alistair, at Alistair Black, at Johnny Gargano. Later on, Regal did announce that Tommaso Ciampa and Velveteen Dream were going to go at it for the NXT Championship at War Games. That should be a good match. And Alistair Black interrupted him and said that he wants Johnny Gargano. Regal made the match for War Games. Black re retaliated by saying that Gargano is going to fade to black. And this should be good. I really hope this is another like no disqualification type of a match because I just want to see Alistair and Gargano kind of really destroy each other because that would be really good and that's kind of what this feud really needs. Time for some tag team action. The Street Profits taking on The Mighty in a rematch from over a month ago when The Mighty defeated The Street Profits and stole their little plastic cup and their little plastic chain. If anyone could get a plastic cup over, it is the Street Profit. I have this here. If you could get this over for me, I would really appreciate that. This was a pretty fun match. I, I liked it. Uh, Street Profits uh, did their thing and the Mighty were basically acting like bullies. Nigel McGuinness calls them the Aussie action heroes. Shouldn't they, they be like the, since they're heels, shouldn't they be like the Aussie super villains? The match ends in Street Profits victory and they get their swag cup back and whatnot. So yeah, this was cool. Much better match than their one uh, about a month ago. I'll give you that. All right, bros, it is time for the debut of the king of bros, Matt Riddle, bro. And uh, let me tell you something, bro. This was a great match. I really, really enjoyed Matt Riddle's debut match, bro. I've seen Matt Riddle wrestle uh, Will Ospreay and Keith Lee before in the indies. And I mean, he was absolutely fantastic then. And he's pretty much doing the same things that he's doing, that he was doing in the indies, which is a good thing. So they didn't, they didn't make him uh, change up his style. I'm pretty sure he was too high to listen to Vince McMahon anyway. Bro, this was fantastic. And you should absolutely check out this match, bro. If you haven't, you are missing out, bro. This was great. Uh, Matt Riddle, of course, won with uh, the bro mission onto Luke Menzies, that's his name. And yeah, this was cool. I am excited, bro, for Matt Riddle. NXT has officially become 
Brotastic. We now had some more tag team action. Danny Birch and Oni Lorcan taking on Raul Mendoza and Humberto Carrillo in a very standard match. And okay, okay, look. Lorcan and Birch are very, very talented wrestlers. Okay, these two are amazing in the ring and I like them as far as their wrestling is concerned, but these are two of the most boring superstars I have ever seen. There is nothing about them that speaks to me. I, I just don't I just don't see anything special about these two. Um, you know, if they could do something that could, uh, you know, make them a little less bland and whatnot, that would be great. Because literally the only thing that's make, keeping me from fast forwarding their match was the fact that is that they are they are really talented. Granted, that may be their whole gimmick that they are extremely talented wrestlers with a lot of resolve, but it really doesn't translate that well into TV. It sounds great on paper, but it's just not translating properly for them. So I really want to see something different from uh, Lorcan and Birch, but uh, they did win uh, with their double team maneuver. It's it looks like an assisted. DDT type of a thing. I don't know what it is, but it, it was fine. Uh, this was a decent match, but um, let's try to do something a little bit different for Danny Birch and Oni Lorcan to make them a little bit more interesting. It is now time for our main event or what was supposed to be the main event. Adam Cole, Bebe, and the uh, returning Bobby Fish of the Undisputed Era were going to face off against the War Raiders in the main event of NXT. But they, while they were cutting a promo, the Era were, uh, War Raiders came from the back. They started beating up on all four members of the Undisputed Era. The brawl went outside, but quickly the numbers game came into the Era's advantage. Then Ricochet came in to help. They were uh, able to uh, hold off the Era for a while until they got into the ring where the numbers game came back to haunt them when Fish took a chair and hit Hansen across the leg. Pete Dunne came out, helped out the good guys, and it was made official by William Regal. The Undisputed Era, all four members will be taking on War Raiders, Pete Dunne, and Ricochet in a War Games match. This is going to be amazing, I can tell. All four of these guys have been in the, in the previous War Games match, so they obviously have the experience, but this is going to be really, really good. I, I can tell. And I really do think it is going to be the main event of NXT War Games. It, it probably, it obviously, it, it is going to be. And it should be. So, yeah. Um, but I'm excited. The, like I said, the card is shaping up very nicely. And I'm looking forward to NXT War Games. But for now, let's get into 205 Live. 205 Live began with Brian Kendrick, sorry, the Brian Kendrick, taking on gentleman Jack Gallagher in a pretty decent match. Drew Gulak, of course, was on commentary, continuing to uh, encourage his partner, Jack Gallagher, while simultaneously talking about how Brian Kendrick has lost his edge, and that is why he was, of course, kicked out. He continues to make fun of uh, Percy Watson. Good ring work between both these men. I think these two have had a match before, but the roles were reversed at the time. Kendrick was a heel and Gallagher was a face. And then of course, the whole heel turn with Gallagher happened and whatnot. Interestingly, we have the whole uh, role reversal thing going on on Raw between Seth Rollins and uh, Dean Ambrose. So there's that. I'm not trying to draw any parallels, but... So Drew Gulak does try to get involved in the match. Then Akira Tozawa comes out of the crowd hits Drew Gulak with a drop kick and this uh, distracts Jack Gallagher and allows uh, Brian Kendrick to hit the sliced bread. Interesting name for a finisher, but it's a cool finisher nonetheless. And Kendrick picks up the win and it looks like we are getting a tag match uh, probably sometime down in the future between Gallagher and Gulak versus Tozawa and Kendrick. So. That should be an interesting match. So Grand Metalik of Lucha House Party takes on a local competitor. Lucha House Party were on uh, Monday Night Raw this week. It was, of course, Kalisto and Lindsay Dorado. So I guess now they're giving the match at 205 Live to Grand Metalik. But they had a match against the Revival on Raw. And may I just say how wonderfully the WWE is booking the Revival. Just the most dominant tag, one of, one of the most amazing tag teams on NXT coming into Raw and being fed to multiple teams. 
That is exactly how you build up a team, folks. Take notes, Ring of Honor. Take notes, New Japan. Take notes, uh, Impact Wrestling. You three do not know how to do tag teams. WWE knows how to do them. Just look at the Revival as your example. Grand Metal League does make quick work of this uh, local talent, but that's not the main story here. The story is, of course, that TJP comes in, removes the mask off of Grand Metal League forcibly, and runs off and interrupts an interview between Maria Canellis and Neville, I mean Mike Canellis, and uh, basically asks them for protection, which they give him, and looks like they're forming some sort of alliance. So this should be interesting. We then had a couple of interviews. We did have a couple of segments that I want to get into. Cedric Alexander trying to ask for his rematch uh, against Buddy Murphy, which makes sense because he is supposed to have a rematch clause, but Drake Maverick just completely ignores it and says, oh, you've been on a losing streak, so I'm not giving you a rematch. What does that even matter? He has a contra contractually obligated rematch against Buddy Murphy. Just give it to him and get it over with. I don't get why you're doing this. I mean, I get it that, the, that there are much more interesting matches you can do with Ali or Tony Nese, but again, Alexander has a rematch clause in his contract. He should be able to invoke it whenever he feels like it. So yeah, that's still, that logic doesn't make sense to me. Before the main event, Tony Nese and Buddy Murphy are getting interviewed and Buddy Murphy basically uh, is just saying that the 205 title is gonna stay between Nice and uh, Murphy. The interviewer, I forget who it is, she's like, what if Tony Nice does win? Are you two still gonna be friends or whatever? And Buddy Murphy's like, don't worry about it. I, in my opinion, continuing to validate my theory that Tony Nice might be heading towards a face turn, but hey, we you never know, only time will tell, so we'll see. And now we have the main event, ladies and gentlemen, Tony Nice taking on a heavily taped up Mustafa Ali after his grueling match with Hideo Itami last week. And this was another really good match. I mean, Tony Nice uh, does his powerhouse stuff. Mustafa Ali does his his stuff, of course. Mustafa Ali really does remind me of Seth Rollins. I really want to see those two interact sometime in the near future. We have 205 Live Stars kind of sometimes, you know, bleeding into Monday Night Raw. I would love to see one of those guys, one of the 205 Live guys be Mustafa Ali, let him come in and, you know, uh, do have some sort of interaction with Seth Rollins, because I would like to see that. Great match, uh, Mustafa Ali, uh, heavily taped up as I mentioned so Tony Nice obviously targets the ribs at one point Tony Nice is like strips off the bandages and you know just continues just wailing on the ribs of Mustafa Ali but of course Ali does get the upset win roll up victory over Nice to much to uh, Nice's chagrin Cedric Alexander comes in uh looks like he's going to turn on Mustafa Ali but not yet he picks up Mustafa Ali because, of course, they're best friends. Buddy Murphy comes in, and uh, both parties stare each other down. I am really, really smelling a Tony Nese face turn and a Cedric Alexander heel turn in the near future. Uh, Tony Nese, in my opinion, doesn't really need a face turn, but Alexander uh, heel turn, I think, would be really interesting. The highlights of both shows, as far as NXT is concerned, um, obviously, bro, I gotta go with the Matt Riddle's debut match. Uh, it was fantastic. I loved it. Uh, good to see Matt Riddle in NXT. The last segment with the Arrow, War Raiders, uh, Ricochet, and Dunn. Um, also really good stuff there. And the, the, the whole uh, match card for War Games taking shape looks really good so far. I'm excited to see uh, what they're gonna do for uh, Baszler and Kylie Sane. So that should be cool because, of course, Sane lost her. Uh, women's title at Evolution. So um, I'm interested to see what they're going to do with that. As far as 205 Live is concerned, I'm intrigued in what uh, the Canellises and TJP have planned for Lucha House Party. I loved uh, Mustafa Ali versus Tony Nese, though not nearly as good as Ali versus Itami. This was still a very good match. So that pretty much concludes my thoughts on NXT and 205 Live this week. Let me know what you guys thought about both shows in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on social media and tell your friends about the Nerdy Mark. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you so much for the support. This is Sid signing off. You guys take care. Bye-bye.